Good afternoon. This morning, I posted a short video called Spirit and Power. And uh, I mentioned that I'd be uploading a longer video that uh, addressed it. And so this is that longer video. But before I get into it, thank you to everyone who has subscribed, liked, commented, and shared these videos. If you've not yet done that, please do. Uh, the channel is growing, and I appreciate that very much and would like for it to grow even more. Anyway, thank you. Acts 10.38, Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, wrote that Peter testified that when he was at Cornelius' house, part of his message was, and you know, Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he, Jesus, went about doing good and healed all those oppressed of the devil. That's Acts 10. 38. And as I mentioned in the short video this morning, the phrase with the Holy Spirit and power interests me because Jesus said in Acts 1.8 that when the Holy Spirit comes upon a believer, they receive power. He said this, and when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power or you shall receive power when at the moment, at the same time that the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. So what is Luke referring to when he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power? Why the differentiation? Paul does that too when he writes to the saints at Corinth. In 1 Corinthians 2, he said, I did not come to you with wise and persuasive speech. But I came to you with a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. So a little different phraseology, but the same meaning. A demonstration or a manifestation of the Holy Spirit and power. So there's that distinction or that differentiation once again. So why the differentiation? What, what are the New Testament writers, Luke, as it pertains to Acts, and Peter as he preached the sermon at Cornelius' house, and Paul as he's writing to the saints in Corinth? What are they communicating? Well, I believe, among other things, what is being communicated is the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is not a thing, meaning power. So it is quite possible and true that you can receive the Holy Spirit and power, but function or manifest the Holy Spirit and there not be a manifestation of power. Now, there should be, when power is needed, power should be released because power in the person of the Holy Spirit is always available. Now, what is that power for? Well, first and foremost, it's to cause each individual believer, or as I would say, every believing believer, to live victorious, victoriously over sin, sickness, disease, poverty, shame, and all of the things that the curse of the law brings upon a person. So first and foremost, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of power is for each individual believer to live victoriously over temptation and sin and sickness and disease, etc. But it's also so that that power or the person, the presence of the Holy Spirit in all of the gifts and the fruit that he possesses can, will, and should be released through the life of each believer so that those that they're in contact with or that they encounter or who encounter them can have an experience with the Holy Spirit. And we know from 1 Corinthians 12, there are nine gifts listed there of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, there are nine fruit of the Holy Spirit listed there. Romans 12 gives some other manifestations of the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers and the life of the church that Jesus is building. So when you read those phrases, a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power, 
God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit in power. Just know that there are many ways that the Holy Spirit can, will, and should manifest his life through the life of a believing believer. It can manifest in authority. Jesus said, I give you authority, right? All power, all authority is mine, and I give it to you, etc. And so I want to encourage you. One, if you're a believer, but not a believing believer, become a believing believer. Believe the words of God. Believe the words of Christ. And get to know, intimately know the person of the Holy Spirit. Make yourself available to him every day, all day, all the time. Make yourself available to him. Surrendered to him, to his life, his activity, his ministry, his presence, so that whether in word or deed, he can use you to deliver people who are oppressed of the devil. And by the way, that starts with you and me. He wants to deliver us from any and all oppression of the devil. Hey, thanks again for watching these videos, for subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing them. God bless you. Peace in.